one thing that you mentioned earlier that that caught my ear and I know is is an exciting development uh, for for your company but you mentioned that that goal of achieving net zero that's something you know I think yourself uh, all our listeners myself you know we've been hearing that that phrase you know net zero in Canada has you know has committed to some lofty goals of achieving a net zero emissions by 2050 I believe so yes. with respect to SFC um, talk to me a little bit about some exciting developments around that clean technology space. Yeah, so I would say when you look at, at achieving these net zero carbon emissions, you need to take an inventory of what you're doing at these sites that's actually contributing to your carbon footprint. Um, so whether that's using diesel generators to produce power, that's an area where I can come in um, and I can give you a hybrid fuel cell solution that's going to eliminate the use of diesel and whether it's hydrogen fuel cell or if it's methanol fuel cell, uh, you've either eliminated all of your CO2 footprint uh, or you've drastically reduced it. Um, so we're, essentially what we're doing is, is we're helping clients achieve these goals. But then by doing that, uh, we're also letting them get away from carbon taxes, uh, diesel taxes, and it's helping them become a more attractive uh, business for investment because they are actioning on um these net uh, zero emission goals. And, and that's so important because for, for yourself, for all of us in the energy industry, we all want to be part of the solution, right? Like we all want to help move the industry towards, you know, doing things more sustainably, more efficiently, um, helping achieve these, these targets, because I think it's all in our best interests. Um, Chelsea, can you elaborate on, you know, the, the hydrogen fuel cell technology and how, you know, how does, how does the system work? How does it produce its power? Um, so the hydrogen fuel cell, how it produces power is through a chemical reaction. So energy input is going to be oxygen and hydrogen. Um, it's going through a platinum catalyst that's basically separating anodes from cathodes. And from that, you're going to get uh, DC power. You're going to get waste heat and a small amount of water vapor. So it really is one of the cleanest ways of producing power. Okay, <laughs> great. That was a great, great explanation. As, as you say that, I'm, I'm, you know, my, my mind's turning in, in, in how it works and how this, you know, would be applicable for clients. And this, and forgive me, Chelsea, this may be, um, you know, may, it may not be the best question, but where, where can the clients get the hydrogen from? So that's a really good question. I would say that depending on where you are in the world, there's different countries that are further along with their hydrogen strategy. Um, so for us in North America, I would say that we're a couple steps behind European uh, markets where hydrogen is readily available and often being produced on site. Uh, so for the clients that are looking to install the hydrogen fuel cell today, chances are you're going to have to work with an industrial gas provider like Lind or an Air Liquide okay. to get bottled hydrogen to bring into your application, whether that's a bulk tube truck uh, or cylinders. Um, but as uh, kind of the hydrogen strategy in Canada starts to evolve, we're going to start seeing industries producing hydrogen on site where we will be able to use that, that hydrogen that's being produced to create power. 